I know there's uh, still some folks in, in line to get your breakfast, but uh, that's it. It's over, so if you've come for breakfast and you haven't got anything, you have to stop right now. Okay, everyone take the seat. <laughs> it's okay, carry on, but um, we're going to start um, and just uh, take your seats when you're ready. Okay, so today, good morning first, actually. Good morning, everybody. Come on, you can free breakfast. You can do better than that. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. And for those of you that didn't, at least we can agree it's morning, right? So it is definitely morning. So today we're going to ask a question, really. We're going to ask a question about, is there really a mainframe skills issue? What do people think about whether or not there's a mainframe skills issue in the industry? Okay. Um, we're going to talk about that for a little while at the beginning. Then I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, how we in Hursley have solved the kick skills issue for our team. Okay? So we do not believe in our team we have a skills issue. Right? We don't have a mainframe skills issue. We don't believe we have that issue. So we're going to talk a little bit about how we've solved that. Um, I'll introduce you to three of our um, KICS development organization. Um, they will then tell you in their own words a little bit about their story of how they came to join IBM, join KICS, uh, progression, plans, the kind of things that made them want to join, the kind of things that made them want to stay, uh, etc. And then we're going to talk right at the end um, about uh, a new program that our uh, younger developers and our younger employees uh, have put together themselves to reach out to other organizations um, to see if we can help you uh, if you feel that you may have a skills problem. Okay. So before we start, I will quickly introduce myself. My name is Andrew Bates. Uh, I'm the product manager for Kix Transaction Server. I started IBM as a Generation Z about 10 years ago. I'm pretty sure I can't be classed as a Generation Z anymore, but uh, I guess we were all Generation Z once. So I'm going to keep that badge. Um, so yeah, I'm the product manager for Kix and Hursley, 15 years in IBM, always been in Kix, although in, in various different roles. Uh, let me now introduce the panelist. We have uh, Will Yates, who is our uh, Kix TS test architect. For those of you that can't see Will clearly, I have a picture here for you. Will is the one on the <laughs> <laughs> the right. <laughs> okay. See, this is the thing about being Facebook friends with your work colleagues. <laughs> so, did you say friends? Ex friends. Yeah. Ex Facebook yeah. friends from your work colleagues. Um, Ian Burnett is our Kicks performance team leader. Ian is looks a little bit like this, or at least he did ten years ago. Um, and Dr. Chris Paul, who um, has a PhD in physics, is that right? Yep. Yep. Um, so we've got obviously a very serious picture of Chris, who's a doctor. Chris Paul, our PhD, and Chris is a software engineer in our, uh, our DevOps space right now. Okay, so first of all, I'd just like to uh, ask very briefly what everyone in the room thinks. So we'll have a, a quick vote. So anybody that thinks there's a kick skills issue, if you could please stand on one foot and put your hand on your nose and then your hand on your head like that. Nobody, nobody, there is no kick skills issue. It is unanimous, there is no, no. That's obviously kind of a joke, and I clearly expected you to say no to that. But I did make the point because it's the point that you can take, there are a lot of statistics out there about whether or not there is a mainframe skills issue. And you have to take statistics, because many of them contradict each other, you have to take them with a pinch of salt. So I just have a statistic sample of a room of maybe 50 or so people, none of whom thought there was a mainframe skills issue by the way I asked the question. So let's just bear that in mind when we see some of the statistics. But first of all, what does IBM think about 
whether or not there is a skills issue. So IBM recognises that we need to invest in the area of training and supporting organisations to train and nurture future mainframe professionals. And I think this is a slide actually that I took from uh, Tom Rosamilia's keynote uh, this morning. I think that we can claim that we are doing a pretty good job, honestly, right? 70, uh, 70 countries, 1,400 universities, almost 200,000 students have been through these courses. Uh, we have the Master the Mainframe competition, some partners, Marist, um, uh, and some other partners on there have free online education. Okay. So I think IBM's position is that we're contributing. Okay. And we also have some tools, and we also have our courses ourselves. Um, but right now, let's just think about that. However, this is a IBM uh, red piece point of view from last year, which also recognizes the fact that and you read the numbers on here, but it's 20% of organizations who run a mainframe say they need additional skills today. 15% um, say they'll need them in the next one and three years, and 27% say they'll need them in the next uh, three to five years. Okay? So we're also recognizing that the problem isn't solved. Right? We don't think we've solved the problem by doing this, and we're going to continue to work on it. But I think our position is we are contributing to the solution. We're contributing to the community of new talent coming into the mainframe. So that's IBM. How about Share? So this is a screen grab actually from the uh, from this leaflet here, which you would have all got in your uh, rucksacks uh, at the beginning of the week. And this talks about um, the need for skills talent. It's the same kind of thing. It's uh, which organizations feel that there's a skills issue. And there's a rather complicated chart here with some axes where there's percentages on both the axes and no axes titles. But I studied it very carefully, and I think I know what it says. I think it says uh, a little bit. Some organizations have a problem, some have it now, some think they'll have it in a couple of years, some think they'll have it in five years, some don't think they have a problem. Okay? So that's what Share thinks. What do our vendors say? Okay? Now you probably can't read this, but I'll read the key thing for you. This is from a, a BMC annual survey. Uh, it says 81% of those surveyed in 2011 said they were somewhat or very concerned about staffing, which is up from 73% in 2008. But it should be noted that the title of this article is Mainframe Skill Shortage, No Problem. Now, this particular article is talking about some of the tools that BMC and some of the processes that BMC have that help you solve the problem, okay? So that's great. The press don't always pick up on the solution for the problem, but I have seen these numbers, the 81%, quoted in articles. It makes a better article if you just talk about the problem, right? What about CompuWare? Two-thirds of CIOs believe that the looming mainframe skill shortage will hurt their business. But, CompuWare also have some tools in this space that can help you solve the problem. Okay? In particular, this article was talking about CompuWare Workbench. CA. CA Technologies sees the skills issue driving problems. But CA has a solution as well. Okay? Now, I'm not saying this to... Um, downplay the vendors. I think that the fact that we have three major vendors and a ton more that I haven't mentioned, right, producing tools and education. CA has a, a mainframe academy course catalog, which is actually fantastic. But we have vendors out there that are investing very heavily in tools, processes, um, education to help support the future of mainframe talent 
is a very, very good thing, okay? I think it's a fantastic thing. So it's not just IBM, and it's not just Share, and it's not even just the big three vendors. There are a number of other vendors that I haven't even mentioned. But all of our community, the mainframe community, is investing in trying to um, help address this problem. Okay, so we've talked there about um, companies or organizations with uh, an interest, a vested interest in the mainframe, okay? What about independent sources? So what does Google say? Let's have a look at Google, right? So if you go to Google, this says from CIO Journal here, the mainframe skill shortage is getting worse. Okay, well, that doesn't sound very good. There's one here that says, the shortage of mainframe skills looms, but companies remain in denial. Well, that sounds even worse, right? Now I'm getting very worried. Finally, CIOs are scared that the skill shortage will hurt their business. Global study shows limited progress being made. Okay, so first of all, I was quite happy. I saw all the great work IBM's doing, the great work Share does, the great work our business partners and vendors do in this space, but now I'm reading the press and I'm thinking, it's not working, right? The press is saying it's not working. So now I'm left wondering, where are all of the skills, right? If they're not on the mainframe, we know that we have, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not more, people learning computer science globally, going through universities globally, right, going into industry. So where are they going? Well, I'm guessing it's Java, right? Because this is, you know, everybody says it's really easy to get Java skills, right? Must be Java. Oh, okay, so Java World says that there is a software developer shortage in Java skills that transcends international boundaries. Mm. Okay, so the skill isn't just limited to the mainframe, there's also a, um, a, a problem with Java skills. So now I'm even more worried. I guess everybody must be doing mobile, right? Because mobile is, is the big thing, we all, all, everybody wants to uh, to learn to be a mobile programmer these days, right? And we know that uh, there's mobile apps everywhere. I have dozens on my phone. According to Forbes, the shortage of development talent is crushing mobile. There is a skills shortage of mobile talent. That's a problem. In fact, you would think that all of these skills would be in the area of Java and Android and iOS. But according to this article, there's a shortage of skills of people in all of those disciplines. The source, by the way, is a prominent IT recruiter whose industry is to sell skills of iOS and Java and Android, of course, right? But, so what are they doing, right? It's not Java, it's not mobile. Where are the skills? Where are the people? Cloud. It must be cloud, right? Cloud is the next big thing. Uh, okay, so, there's a skills shortage in cloud as well. I really don't know where these people are going. Windows. Everybody knows Windows, right? My, I have young children. They're four and five. They know how to do basic things on Windows. It must be Windows. Nope. Okay, according to the register, migration skills shortage in Windows Server <laughs> 2003 death date approaches. Um, 179 days left to escape Microsoft's day of doom. Sounds ominous. Okay. So this is a bit weird, right? I mean, something smells a bit fishy. I don't really understand where all these skills are if they're not doing anything. So I googled fishery skills shortage. Okay. And as it turns out, a skill shortage threatens territory fishing industry. There is a skill shortage in fishing. Can you believe it? Now, that was a, um, an Australian Northern Territories article, so I thought maybe that's just localized. I did a bit more digging and found that the US Department of Commerce produced a, a quite detailed report on the shortage of people with degrees who are going into the fishing industry, that's hurting the fishing industry. 
Okay, so if you go to the press, you can see a lot of articles on skill shortages pretty much anywhere. So a light bulb started to go on in my head here, which was fortunate because if it had gone out, we wouldn't have been able to get any, uh, any electricians to help us fix it because there is a massive shortage of electricians predicted for the US. There is a huge skill shortage. So maybe people should retrain, right? Is, is that the right answer? I mean, surely, if there's a skill shortage in every industry, training is the answer. There's a skill shortage in teachers, okay? Particularly teachers with coding skills. I don't know where to go from here. Well, maybe I do. So maybe this is a very serious problem. Maybe it's a political problem. Okay, maybe the politics, give me a second, right? Give me a second, right? <laughs> so, this looks serious. This must be a political issue. Maybe there is a political skills shortage. No, actually, can you believe it? There is no skills shortage of politicians, amazingly, which... Uh, and uh, I was about to make a, a joke about Donald Trump here, but given that we're being videoed, I guess I will. Better not. Okay, so actually the gentleman over there in the corner asked, what were the skills, uh, what were the skills problems that were being reported 20 years ago? Well, it's interesting you should say that, and I'll get to that in a second, okay? But this article talks about the fact, this is from a few years ago, the Harvard Business Review, and it talks about the fact that there is an issue in graphic designing skills because they have to retrain from Flash to HTML5. And that is causing a huge skill shortage. But look, not all articles are as doom and gloom as this, okay? There are also articles out there that are pragmatic. Mainframe skills shortage, how to tackle the crisis, how to overcome the lack of mainframe skills and maintain strategic legacy systems. And there are some articles that are dismissive, okay? It basically says the fake skill shortage. This was actually a famous one in the New York Times. Um, but we've got them uh, straight for, for the mainframe as well, the skills uh, myth. Do complex mainframe computers really make it hard to find programmers? This article is deferring. So this article says there is going to be a skill shortage, and it's going to be horrific. It will affect absolutely everybody, but not for five years, which is quite good, except this article was written in 2002. So, so I think the point that I'm trying to make here, really, is that there is an article, there is a person, there is an organization, there is an analyst, there is someone trying to sell you something that has an agenda to tell you that there is or there is not a skills issue. So I'm going to put that to bed. I'm going to say, you know what? In my opinion, there is no skills issue because for me personally, in our organization, the Kix Development Organization, we do not have a skills issue. And the reason we do not have a skills issue is because we did planning, okay? If you don't plan for things, you may find they, they creep up on you. So I'm going to suggest, actually, that there is not a mainframe skills issue, but there is a mainframe skills planning issue. If you fail to plan to replenish your talent as your talent leaves, which they will because humans age, then you are going to have a skills issue. But the skills issue is just the symptom. The problem is a skills planning issue. It's almost an HR issue, okay? So what I'm gonna talk about now, very quickly, before I hand over to co-panelists, is what we have done, and maybe some best practices. So first of all, hire good young people. And I wanna show a very quick video just to prove to you that we haven't randomly picked three people and sent them out here just for this presentation. This really is something that we do do. So let me just show you this a second. So 
I will show you this. I can figure out how to stop Microsoft from owning my computer. How's that? Okay. I'm a game changer. I believe in better. I think differently. I can change things. I make a difference. I care. I'm not just nine to five. I go the extra mile. I define my own scope. I'm an innovator. I love my job. I break boundaries. I don't like waiting. I want things faster. I love a challenge. I'm part of a team. We're starting a revolution. We are the future. Will you join us? I'm in. 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 Are you? You can see that on um, YouTube, uh, the link to it is there. That is actually all of those people at the time of the filming were part of the Kicks Development Organization. And you know what? Almost all of them are still part of the Kicks Development Organization and we filmed that probably a year and a half ago now, if not more. And many of them have come up the ranks since then, right? Many of them have got new, more senior roles within the Kicks Organization, okay? So, the key for us is that we hire people with the expectation that they will be really, really good in a few years, okay? They're gonna be good now. And we're, we're gonna give them real problems to try and solve, right? Not small, tiny problems. We're gonna try and give them real problems to solve, okay? Difficult problems, but not the most difficult problems. But then in a few years, they might be able to solve the most difficult problems, and many are. The other thing is that we learn from our young people at least as much as we teach, okay? Now, a lot of the new technology in Kix recently, uh, in the areas of Java, DevOps, Cloud, has come from young people coming in saying, well, this is kind of how we did it in university, or this is how the market is doing it. I wonder what would happen if we tried to apply this to Kix, okay? We've made some really good innovation progress by hiring young people and taking their advice, okay? Another key thing, give them modern tools and processes. I don't care, I mean, this is a vendor-sponsored presentation, I'm from IBM, we use these tools, okay? I'm not, um, <laughs> I'm not just showing a chart of things that we don't use, these are the tools that we use in the Kix Development Organization. Rational Requirements Composer, Rational Developers for Z, Rational Quality Manager, Rational Team Concert, they're fantastic tools. Okay. We also use a number of open source tools. Okay. But honestly, I don't mind whose tools you use to solve the problem, but you should use tools to help solve the problem. Young people want to use these kind of tools. Okay. Modern processes. So we are an agile organization. Right? Um, we do story points. Even our testing is agile, largely due, in fact, to Will's leadership here, who introduced agile qu test quadrants, okay? And a continuous delivery model, which we're moving to. And we use something called design thinking, right? Which is essentially a design process that enables you to build teams, cross-discipline teams, so people from the business, the strategy, development, test, documentation, design, every part of the end-to-end -end process is involved in solving a problem from the identification of the problem right the way through to taking that problem to market. Everyone feels ownership of the problem that they are trying to solve. So we've broken up you know, our Kix TS releases into problems that we're trying to solve and we assign teams to go through a process to solve those problems. And people contribute and feel a part of those teams. We're not just saying, the senior people have decided what we need to do, this is it, go and do it. It's really about giving people the problem to try and solve with guidance from the senior leadership. Okay, so now we have, um, how much do you have? 15 minutes left, okay, sorry. <laughs> Now, if we can have uh, a few minutes each, if, uh, first of all, I'll ask um, uh, Ian to stand up and just talk briefly about you know, 
who are you? How long have you been in Kicks? Did you start in Kicks? Um, and what makes you stay? Thanks, Andy. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Ian Burnett. I started with IBM 14 years ago. Uh, I've been in CICS for about eight years now. I started doing Java, really. I started doing a uh, test of WebSphere application server, and then I've slowly migrated towards mainframe over that time because I started doing WebSphere tests with Java, and then I moved on to developing with C on distributed. And then I moved into developing the piece of code that executes on the mainframe between a JVM and MQ. So that gave me a little taste of 390 assembler, which looked quite interesting. And then that moved me into MQ development. So I was the MQ development team on Z for a while. And then I moved across to Kickspex SM development. And then I ended up as performance team lead. So I'm now the performance team lead for Kix TS. And it's brilliant. I love it. So I've, I've migrated from the cool, sexy Java world onto the mainframe, which seems to be the opposite direction people think you should go. But it isn't. It's brilliant. I, I love being down and dirty with the hardware, getting really into how the hardware works. And, and that's my world. And you could say that, OK, well, you can get that on Intel. You can get that on, on any of the other distributed systems. But you can't get it on the other distributed systems at this scale and of this importance. I mean, you've got plenty of things this week telling you how important the mainframe is and how it runs the world. And that's fascinating. And, and that's why I'm still in kicks after eight years. And that's why I'm still interested on in being on the platform for another 25 years. So good morning. Uh, my name is Will Yates. As uh, Andy said, I'm the Kix test architect. And I started in Kix straight out of university. So I did my degree, a uh, bachelor's in computer science, and started at IBM, and started with Kix Transaction Server as a member of their test team. So I could have gone, well, okay, this is great, it's got my foot in the door, I'm in IBM, I'm one of the world's largest companies, let's go do something cool and sexy. Let's not hang around on this mainframe thing. Because I had no skills, I had no specific mainframe skills, I had no, they sat me in front of ISPF, and what's this, I've never used this before. But it's not about the tools. The tools didn't make me stay. All the cool tools that Andy said didn't make me stay. It wasn't about the processes. The processes are cool, because some of them are mine, and mine are the best. <laughs> but it wasn't the processes that made me stay. It was the problem that I was being asked to solve. We're trying to introduce web services into Kix, and we need to make it sure that it works, that it's bulletproof, that it's scalable, that it's secure, and I need you to go and make sure that it works. How you do it, that's up to you. That's where we need your help, your leadership, your intelligence, your, your skills. We've got a whole department of people that will help you, but you need to go away and do it. Well, what a big problem is that? How cool is that? If we're going to put something into a product that's used by, well, not just for my customers, of which there are you know, hundreds, but this is going to affect a piece of software that everyone on the planet probably touches in some way every day. And if you don't do your job correctly, that's probably going to fail. That's a huge set of responsibility. That's a huge problem. And that's the kind of stuff that gets you up in the morning. So yes, I could have gone elsewhere. I could have gone and worked for, well, swapped with, swapped with Ian and gone and done some cool stuff with WebSphere and Java and, you know, no. I stay with the mainframe because the problem that I'm being asked to solve is important. And it's the importance and the difficulty of that problem that makes me want to stay. So it's not about the tools. It's not about the process. It's about hiring, hiring clever people and giving them a really good problem to go solve. Because that is what will engage them, and that's what will make them stay. Yes, I can use the rational tools, but if I just need to go in and quickly tweak a bit of JCL, I'll use ISPF. It's just an interface. 
Let's not get hung up on, if we move to these tools, we'll, get, we'll solve the problem. It may just only go some way. Actually, it's about making sure that the people that you get involved are smart people and giving them good quality work to do. And that's what will engage them, and then they will pick up the skills that they need in order to do that job well. Okay, thank you. Hi, thanks for the photo, Andy. Very kind. Um, so, hi, I'm Chris Poole. Um, I've been in IBM for just over three years now. Um, I, as Andy said, I did a PhD at university, and then I decided academia wasn't for me, so came to IBM. Um, so I joined IBM into the data power organization, not mainframe at all. Um, I, was, I was in a team that was writing some software for data power appliances, and it was good, but part of the, um, the graduate program that we have at IBM is that it allows us to rotate into different areas, which is quite good. You get to see different parts of the company, different people, different ways of working. So I, I stayed in that team for about nine months, um, and then I changed into the API management team, which at the time and still is one of the cool pieces of technology that, I, uh, I, that IBM is pushing out right now. Um, and it is still really good, but I was also trying to think ahead. And the reason why after, I think, about four or five months of being in that team, I moved into Kix, which is where I still am, is that I wanted to so I came, I came to the realization at some point that it's not about the tools or the actual languages or anything like that that you're, you're learning at any one time. It's about the patterns that you're learning. And if you learn the patterns, you can apply them to all kinds of different places. And there's a lot of interesting technology that is on the mainframe that is still ongoing on the mainframe. Lots of cool technology that we're doing in Kix now, which is something that we're working on for the future. And it's that kind of stuff that really drew me into the team. The other thing that drew me as well is the experience of the team as well. There's, I don't know, is it fair to say the Kix team is slightly, the average age of the Kix person is maybe a bit older than some of the average people who are in WebSphere, for example. Mm -hmm. and so the average age of the Kix person is in their 40s? Yeah, okay, okay. So the average age is probably in the 40s, is what Andy just said. Um, so part of that is that if you want to chat to somebody who's really experienced in the WebSphere area or something like that, they've been there for about 20 years maybe. But if you chat to somebody who's really experienced in Kix, they've been there for 45 years, and they've got a whole load more experience. And that is somebody you can sit with, you can chat to, you can ask them how these things work, the really low-level bits of Kix, and they'll happily explain it to you. They, they want to be explaining it to you. Um, and as Andy said earlier, you know, it's not that we, you know, we get sat down and it's, you know, this is what, this, this is what a green screen is. This is how you use it. This is all we ever use. We're using RDZ and all these other tools that are useful and still quite nice to use. And um, I do happen to like to use ISPF as well. There's a, I've heard a few times that there's this kind of thought that well, the older people want to use ISPF and they don't ever want to use RDZ, and the younger guys don't ever want to use that stuff. They only ever want to use. RDZ, and I think that's not true at all. I'm quite happy using them, them both. It's, they're different tools. Use the right tool for the right job. Sometimes I'll be sat in RDZ all day. Sometimes I'll be sat in ISPF all day. Um, so one thing that Andy mentioned just earlier was this thing about Generation Z. So I don't want to use this as, as, as a sales pitch too much. Um, but having said that, we've got this. <coughs> Excuse me. We've got this, um, this this kind of initiative that's ongoing right now called Welcome to the Mainframe Days, which is part of the Gen Z initiative. Um, so the aim with this is that we've had a few customers who have come to us and they've said, we don't really have a, a, a skills issue as such. We can train people in COBOL or PL1. It can be done. There are people who will teach this. But the thing that we have is we've, we've got an issue with showing our new employees that it's actually quite a cool, active place to be working. That's the issue, that they get this view of, they get sat down in front of a green screen, this COBOL program, and they're told, please maintain this program. And they find it dull, surprisingly, so they leave. So the challenge was, what can we do to try and show them that there's a whole wide world on the mainframe and 
you could be doing all, all kinds of stuff with REST and JSON and all these other new, more trendy kind of things. You're still on the mainframe. You can still grow your skills, and you can still learn all the cool patterns, which you can then, if you want to, apply to other areas. You know, it's still a, a great place to grow your, your time in that company. So we've done this three times now. First time we did it in Copenhagen in Denmark about uh, six weeks ago. And essentially what this is is a one-day event where, let me go here. So the, the idea is that we're, we're trying to increase our clients' retention, basically. That's the high-level idea. Just by showing them the wider area, we'll run it over one day, um, start the day off with some light kind of kind of easy to um, digest exercises. We'll teach them a bit about why the mainframe still is important right now, you know, what, what kind of other, other areas, other um, parts of the world are still using the mainframe, because m the majority of them are still in the banking area, and they feel like, oh, that's, that's all mainframes are useful, and actually they're used for a whole lot more. Um, so in order to do that, we have this kind of agenda. I go around and say why Z matters, talk about all the cool technology that's in the Z13, EC12. Um, and then we go around an innovation challenge and we talk about the careers that are available. You know, if you've got an interest in security and cryptography, you can still do that on the mainframe, you know, because we like to think the mainframe is quite secure. We need people to be keeping it secure. And then in the evening, we go to the pub and we have a few beers, and that is the main point of the event, right? Share was set up 60 years ago in order to network with other people who are also working on the mainframe and other similar large systems. And the whole issue with Gen Z, really, is that these people don't have that right now. They're 21, 22, they've just come out of college, this is their first job, there's another two or three people in their team that might be the same age, and they don't have any idea of the wider world. They've, they've, they've never seen this. They've no idea that share goes on. Um, so what we're trying to do is build up this network so that they, they can then be able to chat to other people, work out how to solve problems. There's a Facebook page. And just, just try and make it a bit more social. And then if they do have, have issues, they know who to ask questions to. You know, they, there's a load of IBMers on there. Most people are non-IBMers. You know, we don't want to make it something that IBM says, this is what you should be doing. It's meant to be a, like share, right? It's a, a thing where IBM will happily take part, but we are not the, the main people trying to run this, this thing. We want it to be a group effort. So we had a day in Denmark. This is Brian. He, he learned apparently how to write his name, I guess. Um, we learned Denmark's really wet, actually, this, this time of year. But beer is quite good. Actually, the beer is really good there. Um, and the workshop did work as well. These are quotes that we pulled from some of the attendees. You know, I, I believe in it now. Mainframe is much broader than I thought. Right? It was a really good day. Um, so we've since run that twice in the Boston area in the US. Um, and we are looking to do it again. We've got another six or seven customers that are lined up right now. If you've got a, an interest in this, if you've got people in your company that you think might find some use of this, please come and talk to me afterwards, and I will set you up with the people in IBM that can organize this for you. With that, I'll hand back to Andy. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. I really appreciate you uh, getting up and, and standing on stage uh, and telling everybody that. Now, I just want to finish very quickly by saying that you know we, I've made the assertion that we do um, you know a pretty good job in kicks, but I I have to be honest, it wasn't always that way. Okay, so when I uh, when I joined in in 1999 kind of time frame, the average age was a lot higher than the mid 40s that it is pretty much now. Okay. Um, if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. Kix came to Hursley in 1974, add 30 years to that, and what year do you get, right? So the skills issue did, at some point in time, you know, impact us, but not to the extent that it caused us a problem, because what we did is we had a great graduate program every single year, and this is actually throughout the Hursley products, we're not just talking about Kix now, but every single year we hire a number of new graduates, um, 
a great many of them, our retention rate is probably 80% or so, stay within kicks. When they do go, they almost invariably go to other areas in IBM, which is also fantastic. Okay? And then we replenish the, um, the age of the skills over a period of years by hiring new people, training them, having them uh, progress, do fantastic projects, um, and then in turn train new people right, to come in. So, there is, a, uh, there is an issue for some companies, but it can be solved with planning. And uh, as Chris said, if you want to come up, we can talk to you about the Gen Z. For some people it's tools, maybe not for Will, maybe for, um, for Chris here, right? For some people it's the problems to solve. You know, whatever it is, then um, uh, it's important you find that. But I just wanted to leave you the message, it can be solved. So with some planning, hopefully we can solve it together. Okay, thank you very much. I have to wrap up, I'm sorry. Um, please enjoy the keynote and please enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Because we're